Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be performing a teardown and repair assessment on the Samsung Galaxy S20 smartphone. After posting my iPhone 12 teardown video, I received many comments from people wanting to see the repairability of other brands of phones. I also was tagged in an Instagram post shortly after releasing the video from someone who claimed the S20 series phones have unreplaceable cameras and charging ports. Has this guy found an anti-repair mechanism, or is there something else at play? I purchased two Galaxy S20 phones to find out. These two phones are both 128GB G980F models, one in blue and the other in black. After cutting through the seal, I can lift up on the box to reveal our S20, this one being the blue model. Inside the box, you can find an ad for Samsung's Care Plus package that can be purchased separately. Hopefully we won't be needing this if I have the ability to be able to fix the phone myself. Also included is a fast charger, headphones and USB-C cable. Unboxing our other S20, it is an identical process, the only difference being the device's colour. With them both unboxed, it's time to set them up to ensure they are working from a factory state. During setup, I'll also program my fingerprint into the phone so we can test whether the function remains after a display replacement. As the reader is embedded into the display, it gets replaced whenever a screen replacement is performed. After setup is complete on both phones, we can see the black phone is on the security update from September and the blue phone is on the August security update. With both phones unboxed and set up, it's time to crack them open to see how repairable this phone is and whether any components are locked as we saw when working on the iPhone 12. The back of this phone is glued shut, so I'll need to use a heat plate at 120 degrees to soften the adhesive. However, a heat gun or similar method could be used to achieve this. After a few minutes on the plate, I could remove it and use a suction cup to create a gap just wide enough to insert a plastic pick. Getting the initial gap is the hardest part. The heat plate evenly spreads the high temperature, which makes this step much easier than using a heat gun. However, the curved edges are much harder to heat with a flat surface. So I used a heat gun on the sides so I could easily slide my pick around to separate the back panel without cracking it. Also being sure not to insert the plastic pick too far inside the phone as I could damage some internals such as the wireless charging coil. After successfully separating the adhesive from the frame, I can remove the back panel. I'll need to repeat this same process for our blue Galaxy S20, which once you've done this a few times, it definitely gets easier. Even the iPhone 12 required heat to open the phone as the display is glued and screwed into place. If you work on many phones, a heat plate is really useful as most phones are glued together. Just be sure to preheat it first. This was something I didn't think of when I first got my heat plate and was wondering why it wasn't softening the adhesive. With a bit of patience, I was able to remove the back panel successfully on the blue phone as well. Getting our first look inside the Galaxy S20, you can see it looks pretty standard for a Samsung device with the wireless charging coil and plastic covers covering up the main logic board of the device. We'll need to get those out of the way so we can get a deeper look inside this device. There is a load of Phillips screws that will need to be unfastened. While I'd still be organizing the screws as you remove them, all these screws are the same size, which makes it practically impossible to cause any damage by putting the wrong screw in the wrong place. After removing the wireless charging coil and antenna from the top of the phone, we can finally get a look at that dual stacked motherboard. Moving down to the lower portion of the phone, I'm going to remove the speaker assembly to see what's going on down there. There's a few cables heading down this way. One is for the display and the other two go to the charging daughter board. So, is the charging port replaceable? Well, yes it is. It is on its own separate daughter board which can be easily unscrewed and replaced if necessary. This wasn't seen on the 4G models of the Galaxy S10 which have soldered in USB-C charging ports. So I am happy to see that change with this Galaxy S20 phone. I'll screw back in place the speaker assembly so we can move up top and remove the motherboard. I'll start by disconnecting all of the flex cables connecting to it so we can pull it entirely out of the phone. 
In doing this, I'm going to be able to swap the motherboards between our two phones to see whether any issues arise from the original components being replaced, including the rumored camera issues. Of course, once we've removed our motherboard, I'll need to get the other one out from our blue S20 first. So I'll need to repeat a similar process by unscrewing the wireless charging coil and antenna before we can get access to our motherboard so that we can remove it. After removing the SIM card tray, only one screw and a bunch of flex cables holds in the S20's motherboard, which makes the removal process just as easy as the first time. With limited room inside the phone, I found the best spot to pry was in the lower left hand corner. Once the board had been removed, we can take a closer look at it and around back you'll see how the cameras are attached. I'll need to disconnect those and swap them between the two devices to simulate a camera repair. In doing this, we're going to see whether indeed the rumor is true or not and the cameras are or aren't replaceable in the S20 phones. With the old cameras out of the way, I'm going to swap them across and reconnect them. I found these a little bit tedious to connect and required a little bit of patience to get properly seated. After reinstalling the motherboard, I'm going to be able to connect all of the flex cables back into the phone so we can test it out. Powering on the device, it booted right up to the lock screen. After turning on the phone, we see no display, battery or other messages like we saw with the iPhone 12. And the fingerprint sensor, well, that's still working. You can see here on the box, this is the cloud blue phone but has been installed in our black housing. So does it work correctly? This rumor said the charging and cameras didn't work after replacement. Plugging in a charger, it works just fine. And the camera, well that's working too. All zoom modes and camera settings appear to be working just fine. So it doesn't appear that the camera has been serialized or locked down in any way, prohibiting third party repair. However, to further check the phone, I'll use a dialer code to load up the diagnostic menu to test other functions of the phone. All the tests I run completed without any problem. So it appears this phone is working just fine after completely swapping all of the parts. I wanted to check my other S20 to see if the results match those of the first phone. Samsung may have issued a software update locking components. So I'll update one phone to the latest software to test this theory. So installing the motherboard and camera from the gray phone into this blue phone, we're going to see if the camera and charging still functions as it should. Loosely sitting on the back panel, I can power up the phone to test it out. With our second phone, everything is also working. So is the new software update causing these rumored issues? I updated one of the phones to the latest software at the time of this video, security patch level October 2020, and the camera, charging and everything else is still working after being replaced and updated to the latest software. So what was causing the camera failed and not charging issues for this guy on Instagram? After some investigating, I managed to reproduce his findings. It appears these issues have nothing to do with Samsung locking down or prohibiting third party repair, but simply a few repair mistakes done by this technician. I believe his issue was simply that the camera wasn't connected correctly or came unplugged when installing the motherboard. I even caused this issue myself after removing and reinstalling the board a few times, so it's an easy mistake to make. The camera can easily come unplugged when installing the motherboard, so avoid pressing down on the camera when fitting the board into place. After reconnecting the camera correctly, you can see everything works as it should. Removing one camera from the phone and testing again, you'll see that the issue will reappear. So it's important to have both cameras working in the phone to have a functioning camera app. As for the not charging issue, in the video shown on Instagram, the guy hadn't reinstalled the wireless charging module. This will result in the phone not charging. The wireless charging module contains a temperature sensor to monitor the battery and stop charging if it gets too hot. This was implemented after some battery issues with a certain Samsung. With the rumor debunked, it's time to get these phones reassembled. A quick clean is given before I start screwing in the motherboard, antenna and wireless charging modules for both phones. 
With all screws in this phone using the Phillips head, repairs only require the one screwdriver. And with the screws for the wireless charging coil, antenna and speaker assembly all being the same length, it's easy to keep screws organized. With all screws reinstalled, I'll ensure the wireless charging coil is adhered back into position. I will clean off the cameras and the inside of the phone with a microfiber cloth before we get the back panel reinstalled. I would advise applying a new adhesive before reattaching the back panel. As I've had to order some internationally and it hasn't arrived yet, I will just temporarily stick the back on with the original adhesive and come back at a later date. After reinstalling the two SIM card trays back into the phone, we're done. So how does the Galaxy S20 stack up in terms of repairability? It contains no paired components that prohibit DIY or third party repair in any way, and important components are modular, although the battery is still glued in. Unfortunately, the back is also glued on, slippery and breaks easy. I wish aluminium or plastic backed phones were still the normal. Even a replaceable battery would be nice. However, not all Samsung phones are created equal. There has been people reporting issues on the repairability of Samsung's A series of phones. I'll be covering this in a separate repair assessment video. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the teardown and repair assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.